What's up, Nick fans? All right. I am Victor Hatiba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today, this super interview, super interview, this channel brings Jan Bagley. Welcome, welcome to the Nick Fans Brazil channel, bro. Victor, how are you, man? It's great to be here. Ah, uh, so happy, so happy bringing you in this channel. It's a great honor for me and Brazilians. Hey, I'm I'm happy to be talking Knicks with you, my friend, and uh, I certainly respect your passion. Ah, uh, I love so much this team since '92, Bagley. Since '92, mm. oh, the, since you go oh, way back. Pat <laughs> Patrick Ewing, John Starks. And uh, mm -hmm. so many players, yeah. but but uh, Jan, um, this channel, uh, Nick Fans Brazil. I know, I know, you are famous on the Nick Fans base around the world. But we have uh, a lot of people who watch this channel and support other teams in Brazil. Uh, do you can introduce yourself for Brazilians? Absolutely. Well, first of all, I, I don't know how you define famous, but I, I appreciate the description <laughs> yeah. of the, the Nick fan base. But I, I, I would say that uh, I've been covering the Knicks in the NBA for a little over 10 years. Um, I was at ESPN for a while, started there covering the team. And then I came over to SNY probably three, three plus years ago and been covering the Knicks and the Nets for SNY. Um, so I've been around the team for a while. Prior to that, I was covering uh, a little bit of everything in New York, pro sports wise, baseball, Mets and Yankees, football, Jets and the Giants, uh, the Knicks and the Nets and some hockey. And, uh, and prior to that, I was, I was cutting my teeth, uh, covering high school sports, uh, in New York city. So, uh, always been around the metropolitan area and the last 10 years or so I've been focused on the Knicks and the NBA. Ah, great, great. But uh, your first time, your first time in Knicks fans Brazil, okay? So I won't talk about the Knicks in this interview, of course. But first, I want to know more about you, Bagley, in your first interview on the channel. Uh, can you tell uh, tell me né, how your passion for journalism basketball and the Knicks Nets started? Absolutely. Yeah. I grew up a big sports fan, uh, back to when I was a young kid, just love sports, you know, would watch games, would watch sports center six times a day, way back when, before social media, I just loved everything about sports. And I also enjoyed writing. And so in college, I just figured, why not give it a shot with sports journalism because of my passion for sports and for writing. And uh, I was very lucky to have this career path. You know, I, I worked hard in college uh, journalism, uh, particularly covering sports uh, at my university and worked hard coming out, uh, going to New York for an internship. And just was very lucky to have several opportunities, several people who believed in me, give me an opportunity um, to report and to write and to develop and uh just very blessed to have been surrounded by the people i've been surrounded with surrounded with and get the opportunities that i've gotten and uh and here i am grinding away um still working hard and just trying to balance now uh work with uh, family life which uh I'm sure many of many of you know how tough that is and but it's 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 fun when you when you have something you do that you're passionate about and I'm certainly very passionate about this job. Uh, I imagine it, bro. I imagine. It. <laughs> uh, I want to talk with you, Bagley. Uh, a quickly uh, question, okay? About uh, Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. Quickly. Uh, what's your opinion on Donovan Mitchell deal uh, going going wrong? Yeah, I think that the Knicks, the Utah, all along had wanted R.J. Barrett in the deal and some people with the Knicks were open to moving Barrett. Others were not. Ultimately the decision comes down to Leon Rose and he was not comfortable with what Utah was asking for. 
in addition in any R.J. Barrett package. And that was probably at least three unprotected first-round picks and multiple players. So the Knicks felt that they had enough to offer Utah to get a deal done. And I think that was the case even after negotiations broke off when R.J. Barrett uh, was offered that extension and agreed to that extension with the Knicks. Even then, I think the Knicks had enough to get a deal done, but they weren't comfortable making an offer that Utah couldn't refuse. They weren't comfortable including all the picks and all the players to get something done. And so uh, they were a little bit more reserved in the negotiations. And I think that's where Cleveland was able to come in aggressively and finish the deal with the Jazz and get Donovan Mitchell. Uh, Bagley, it's complicated for us in Brazil because Donovan Mitchell coming to the Knicks, it's very important uh, because uh, Knicks, uh, it's a long time ago, a contender. It's complicated. In Brazil, it's more popular today. Uh, Golden State Warriors, hmm. Brooklyn Nets, mm -hmm. and so many teams. Sure. But, but, no. C'est la vie, uh, like say the French. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, Bagley, I want your opinion about uh, the Barrett uh, extension. Uh, uh, what's your opinion about this? And uh, I want your opinion about RJ Barrett. In your opinion, RJ Barrett uh, can be a future all star or not, in your opinion? Yeah, I think he can make all-star teams. I think, you know, it depends on the teams that he's playing on and, and where he is in the hierarchy of those teams. But I think he's got the ability to make all-star teams. And when you talk about uh, Barrett and in, in the context of the Donovan Mitchell deal, I thought that the Knicks would have been making a mistake if they included R.J. Barrett in a Donovan Mitchell deal, in part because you bring back Donovan Mitchell, but you don't have R.J. Barrett. What do you really have left? after making that trade do you have enough left with donovan mitchell to be a contending team in the east so that's why i thought the knicks were wise to keep barrett out of that deal with regards to his extension uh, it makes a lot of sense to me because with barrett you know, he's shown you over the last three years that he's able to improve year over year he's shown you that he is a young player who can handle the new york market really well doesn't really get uh shaking up at all doesn't get uh upset about uh when things are not going well when he's maybe being singled out by fans and media he stays pretty even keel so to me this was a, a wise investment by the knicks and, and we'll see where barrett is two three years from now but even if he's not a number one option a number two option he's still a player that can help you win games so to me that's why you do the deal that the knicks did and, and you don't think twice about it because rj barrett Uh, when things are right with your team, will help you win games. Uh, I am suspect uh, about RJ <laughs> because I am a big fan. I am a mm -hmm. big fan, Bagley. And uh, I have uh, a Funko, a Funko, for example, RJ Barrett, Bagley. Uh, and uh, I, I feel uh, RJ Barrett in uh, Nick's fan base so, so popular today and mm. with uh, Nick fans around the world in Brazil United States Germany uh, and so many countries Bagley mm -hmm. and uh, okay but uh, really I believe in this guy Bagley I believe I so believe. you feel like did the, do you feel the Knicks made the right move how, how does Brazil feel about the deal um, so many Brazilians don't like it Mm. Uh, uh, so many angry about mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. so so angry, and uh, so many Brazilians, it's okay about this. Uh, it's complicated because Utah wants so much in, in your price, uh, about uh, Donovan Mitchell. I, mm -hmm. I really, really uh, want donovan mitchell i i joke with alan Hunt, for example spider-man 4 coming to the knicks i joke <laughs> about this but uh uh i you don't like it. so much uh danny Ainge. danny Ainge is smart guy it's, it's a complicated uh young uh bagley um leon rose and danny Ainge 
looks like for me a poker uh play a poker mm -hmm. yeah but in brazil uh, uh no no majory about the the subject but so many brazilians okay and so many brazilians angry about mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Uh, it's complicated. It's complicated. Yeah. It's complicated. I, a lot of people wanted him home. A lot of yes. people wanted to come home. So I, I totally understand the frustration. And it was a big decision for the Knicks. I mean, no matter what happens this year, next year, they have to be right about this one because this was a major decision. It's going to have big implications for the franchise this year, next year, a couple of years moving down the line. So it's it was a big call, and uh, and we'll see how it plays out. Ah. I am so sad about this, but uh, stay in the past, Bagley. Stay in the past. Okay? Yes, sir. Uh, I, <laughs> I want to talk with you about the New York Knicks. Now. What's your expectations, Bagley, uh, with the New York Knicks next season? Uh, this team with Jalen Brunson, uh, with uh, Isaiah Hartenstein, What's your expectation with this team? You know what? I think one thing that they have going for them is low expectations, right? They're not burdened by everybody thinking they're going to make a big leap from last year. I think the bar is low. And so to me, that's always a good thing for a young team that's, that's hungry and trying to prove itself. If the expectations are low, you're not going to be, you know, uh, saddled uh, by, you know, devastating uh, reactions after every loss because people don't expect that much. So I think this club, um, with that and with the young pieces that they have, I don't think there's any reason why they shouldn't be in the hunt for the play-in tournament towards the end of the year. They they should be, you know, 36, 37, 38, 39 wins. You should be around there, and you should be in the hunt for the play-in tournament in the East, and, and then we'll see what happens. But – I think you want to at least be there. I think missing the play-in tournament uh, would be a big disappointment for this group, considering the moves that they made to get Jalen Brunson, to clear up the money to get Jalen Brunson, how things played out with the Donovan Mitchell negotiations. I mean, to miss the play-in tournament, to me, would be a big step back and a big disappointment for this group. But your, what's your opinion about Jalen Brunson and Isaiah Hartenstein? Isaiah Hartenstein, uh, in the beginning, Bagley, I don't like it. Mm. But so many people talking so many good things about this guy. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I see this player can be so, so uh, useful for this team. Uh, he can open the floor. Uh, Jalen Brunson, Barrett, Randall, like he so much uh, making drives, uh, infiltrations. I, I think interesting because the Knicks, uh, Mitchell Robinson, uh, Jericho Sings, uh, so Nerlens Noel, nah, uh, similars nah, players, and uh, Isaiah Hartenstein, I, I I I see can can be interest interested for the from the Knicks because good passer, uh, dif different skills compared with uh, Mitchell Robinson. Um, and the uh, Knicks don't have a good PG, oh. so know. so so uh, it's complicated. Uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Jalen Brunson, uh, uh, is not a franchise player, it's not a PG, uh, from my dreams, but uh, a PG, so solid PG. Nah? But uh, I want your opinion uh, about these two guys. Uh, do you like it, uh, Isaiah Hartenstein, for example? What's your opinion? Yeah, I think Isaiah, you hit it earlier, Victor. He gives the Knicks something as a center that they haven't had in a couple of years, a center who has some versatility on the offensive end, uh, can face the basket, can make passes, can knock down uh, a jump shot. So, you know, they'll be able to spread the floor a bit with Hartenstein on the floor. And that's something that they, 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 excuse me, they weren't able to do much with Mitchell Robinson and Nerlens Noel. So I think that that's, that's an encouraging element there that Hartenstein brings to the Knicks and also Jalen Brunson. You know, they've been seeking consistency at the point guard spot. You know, you've been rooting for this team since 92. So, you know, for the last like 20 plus years, 
they've been looking for consistency at point guard. And obviously Jalen Brunson, they hope they've found it. You said it. He's not a franchise changing player. He alone is not going to bring you a championship. But I think the hope is that he can elevate everyone uh, on this young core with this Knicks team and, and he can help them um, develop and, and improve over the course of the year, make them better, give that, get them easier shots and, and really elevate everybody to the point where the young core looks attractive to maybe the next free agent or the next disgruntled star that's looking out and looking to get out of his current situation. And maybe the Knicks look a little bit more attractive because Jalen Brunson is running the show. And again, getting easier looks for Julius Randle, RJ Barrett, and everybody else in the group. So I think that is that's a, a realistic expectation for Brunson. But if you look at Brunson and you think, oh, he's going to get us to you know the three seed, the two seed. He's he's the key. He alone is going to do it. I think you have unrealistic expectations for Brunson. Uh, Nick fans will be a uh, patience with this team. It's complicated. It's complicated because long time, long time, Bagley. Uh, if you're a great team, I, I remember Bagley in the 90s mm -hmm. with Patrick Ewing, John Starks, Anthony Mason. Oh man, I miss you so much. Uh, <laughs> it's great again, bro. And uh, but, uh, do you think uh, Jalen Brunson can help uh, Julius Randle? Nick, Nick's fan base uh, disappointed with uh, Julius Randle, ang uh, angry. Do you think uh, Jalen Brunson can help this guy? I think so. I do. Um, you know, the interesting thing to me is with R Julius Randle, effective with the ball in his hands. R.J. Barrett had the ball in his hands a lot last year. Jalen Brunson, or in order for him to impact the game, you know, would need the ball in his hands. But also, you look at how he played in Dallas. He played off of Luka Doncic, and Luka Doncic had the ball in his hands a lot. So. I think he's he's accustomed to and can thrive in that complimentary role, Jalen Brunson. And that's why I think he can help a player like Julius Randle. It's just going to be interesting to me, the hierarchy, how they figure out the hierarchy of Randle, Brunson, Barrett, and then whoever else is sharing the floor. You know, who's getting, who's the number one option and how do those shots get allocated? That to me is something that they have to figure out over the course of training camp and the preseason. But I do think in a vacuum, Jalen Brunson can elevate Julius Randle, get him easier shots and get him going in a way that uh, we didn't see last year from Randle often. Uh, and what's your opinion on the younger players in the Knicks? What do you expect uh, from them? Yeah, I think Quentin Grimes, you're going to see a bigger role for Quentin Grimes. I think that Tom Thibodeau is a big Grimes fan. There were people that didn't want Grimes uh, to be moved to Utah in the Donovan Mitchell deal. So I would assume that he gets more minutes. Um, I think Manuel quickly, at least early on in the preseason, I think he'll. I would expect him to get some more minutes. That's been a, a plan that's been discussed internally. Uh, beyond that, I'm not sure what to expect because, you know, you look at Obi Toppin, the, the Julius Randle Obi Toppin dynamic is still there. You know, it's not, it hasn't gone anywhere. So, Does Toppin get more minutes? How does that happen if he does? Does Julius Randle play the three? I don't, I'd be surprised if that happened. Does, do Toppin and Randle share the court together in a four or five lineup? Then you're taking away either Mitchell Robinson or Isaiah Hartenstein. So that's, that's not a clear path. So it's going to be interesting to see how Toppin gets minutes and, and where those minutes come from. And also you look at Cam Reddish. I don't see a clear pathway for him to get on the court unless the Knicks trade Evan Fournier. And then, you know, if you move off of Fournier, then th there's more of a path for Radish to get out there on the floor. So, you know, I think there's, there's still questions around when you look at the younger players, where the minutes are coming from in some of those instances. And those are going to be uh, decisions that Tom Thibodeau makes night in and night out uh, over the course of this, this season, but it starts in training camp and it starts in the preseason. And I think with Thibodeau, If you're a player who comes in to camp in strong shape and regular season conditioning, uh, you're going to have a, a leg up on the competition and you're going to earn some some points with the head coach. So it'll be interesting to see who comes into camp in good shape and what that means for that player or those players in terms of rotation spots or minutes.
Ah, okay. The last question. Last question, Bagley. Yes, uh, I I want to talk uh, with you about the rumors. Uh, are there any rumors about the Knicks that you can talk to us about? Or do you think the cast is closed for the season? Yeah, I don't think that anything is they're shut off in terms of not making any moves between now or now and, and any time during the year. I don't think that's the case. I, you know, I think there's different scenarios being discussed and, and being thought of like there are players who are available who the Knicks, I, I believe, are kind of keeping tabs on, um, you know, a player like Evan Fournier. He, he was in trade talks for much of the year with the Donovan Mitchell deal. So I would wonder if teams continue to ask about him and where the Knicks interest level in dealing Fournier is. They've talked about it a lot. So I, I, I certainly don't think the door is closed on on anything, but particular, particularly when you talk about Fournier and, and maybe some of the other, even young players, uh, the idea that maybe there's a, a deal to be made. I don't think the Knicks are going to be hanging up the phone on any teams that call and are expressing interest in players on, on their roster. I heard so much. Uh, I ask it to you because I hear rumors about uh, Russo Westbrook, uh, Carol Slaver for Evan Fournier, uh, Julius Randle, interesting uh, from Phoenix Suns, from John Gambadoro, from uh, uh, Arizona, Arizona Radio. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, 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 I hear in Brazil so about né, these rumors, né? because I, I, in Brazil, man, uh, we love your, your Twitter because oh, so many Brazilians ah, research, Ian Bagley posted, uh, people uh, sent to me, me sent to my group. Uh, <laughs> so it's very important, Bagley. And, I appreciate uh, the love. I appreciate that, my friend. Thank you. Man, uh, I really, really uh, happy. Né? Uh, thank you so much. Né? Uh, in the future, Bagley, uh, this channel make uh, will make a trip uh, from New York. Né? Me and more 20 Brazilians with me from oh, wow. New York. Yes. <laughs> you, you guys are coming yeah. to the garden, huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yes. Well, you got to keep me posted, man. I, I would love to say hello when, when you're in the garden with your group. You got to let me know when you're here. Uh, I really, really hope meet you in New York. Yeah, so thank it. you so much. Uh, sorry. <laughs> well, good. I really, good. I really hope to meet you in New York. And uh, Bagley, I, I know about your time. And uh, I really, really uh, thank you so much about né, uh, your presence in this channel. It's very, very important for me and Brazilians. Né? I hope see you in the future in this channel. I, I hope you enjoy <laughs> talking with me. My oh, English yeah. is not perfect, man, but I try my best. Okay, uh, I try uh, my best. Victor, I loved it, man. I loved it. I appreciate you having me. I appreciate and respect your passion uh, for the team that I cover. And, it, you know, it's fans like yourself that uh, I hope that they can turn it around, can figure it out sometime soon, because I, I just want people like yourself to have something to root for and to get excited about. But I appreciate you having me on, man. It was great talking to you. And, yeah, let me know when you're at MSG. Uh, let's say hello. <laughs> great, bro. Take care. And I see you in the future. Sounds good. Take Victor. care. Be well. Bye bye. Queria comentar com vocês, né? Nós temos agora uma novidade aqui com relação ao Nick Fans Brasil, que o canal agora pode ter o programa de membros, né? No YouTube. Então eu gostaria de pedir para você, você que puder, se inscreva também, né? Seja membro, seja membro do Nick Fans Brasil. Apenas R$ 7,99 por mês. Apenas R$ 7,99. E você vai ter vantagens exclusivas, vantagens exclusivas por ser membro do canal Nick Fans Brasil. Uma delas, você vai ter grupo especial no WhatsApp, que você vai ter as notícias sempre antes, né? 
vídeos e etc., sempre ditos antes para os membros, uh, benefícios que vão ser estudados ao longo do tempo, que vão ser exclusivos para vocês, além de sorteios, galera. Quem for membro vai ter essa vantagem, galera. Então, bora lá, participa e apoia o canal Nick Fez Brasil, pessoal. Beleza? E aí, pessoal, este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos. E também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não? Para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! Are you down with the orange and the blue?